increasing research is showing that average attention span of people is dramatically reducing. I've been wondering what the impact of this change of work and as we have entered into the future of work has had on the already deteriorated attention spans that we had. In fact, we are constantly distracted not only by technology and applications that call out for our attention, but also there is an interesting distraction between the values and thoughts that we have in mind. When I look at the corporate world, I see a great dichotomy. Majority of the organizations and management teams seem to be living some different values than their stated values. And that's where I think the first challenge begins. What we intend to do and what we end up doing often becomes two different things. And ironically, most of us don't even think about it. I was having a very interesting discussion with my friend, Michael Sternfield, as most of us know, is the leading authority on mind-body integration. He is the founder of Body Presence Coaching, an author, a producer, and most importantly, a student and practitioner of Transcendental Meditation for over 40 years now. Michael, welcome. And thank you so much for taking time out. Every thank you, Shaquan, for having me here. Every time I speak to you, Michael, I, I, I get so enriched that now I decided to share that those riches with all our, our, our friends and viewers here today. Sounds like, have, a great way to, sounds like a great way to get rich is uh, being enriched by each other. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, that is. So you and I were earlier having this discussion, continuing that. Where do you this, see this dichotomy coming from? And why is it that there is so much of struggle in living the values that we intend to. You know, you just described it well. There's a discrepancy often in the corporate world, but not just in the corporate world, in, in everyone's world, between what our intention is, what our stated values are, and what our lived values are. And really, I mean, there's, mindfulness is a buzzword. Um, but the truth of it is, it's really about our connection with ourself, how integrated we are with ourself. When we're integrated with ourself, integrated with our own nature, the disparity between what we intend and what we actually produce gets less and less because we're becoming more united with ourself. Now this can go back to ancient practices like yoga, which is about union. Now I don't want to get deeply spiritual here, but we could. But the main thing is how present and how authentic can I be with myself? If that's my starting point, I'm naturally going to be present and authentic with the people that I work with. And the more you are, you know, from corporate development, you've been involved with this for a while, the more present and authentic you are with yourself, the better you lead your team, the more productive and profitable your team building is going to be. And the net bottom line is going to be for you and your company. So in your experience, Michael, how and where this, this mindfulness and, and uh, uh, integration uh, disappears? Where do we lose it? You know, I really think it starts, one of the reasons you introduced me with body presence coaching, which is one aspect. I have a dual career, both as a producer, working with some of the top people in the, in the entertainment business, producing uh, uh, large events for the David Lynch Foundation. In addition, I've also been a, a therapist and a coach. I found that one of the bottom lines to really become present and authentic with yourself is being aware of your body. Now, you and I have talked about this a lot. There's really three values. Um, being in your head, which has a really good value for clear discrimination and good strategic action. Being in your heart, which is more grounded in your own emotional intelligence, but also being grounded in your gut which relates to the body and being integrated with your body. And what I work with people is on this basis of uh, tuning into the signals from their body, the awareness of their body, their gut level feelings, and that puts you more present in the body. It also keeps you integrated because you could have great intentions. Um, you can have a good feeling, but unless you ground it in your behavior and action, you're a divided person. So that's just a, a sideline to show how the body relates to this, because that's a we've had many discussions on that already. 
But let's talk about what's happening right now with what you just said. And I think, you know, these, these talks that you do are short, maybe we'll do multiple sessions. But, you know, uh, I always admired Einstein, not only as one of the greatest physicists of, the, uh, of our modern times, but also a brilliant philosopher. And he made a statement which has deeply touched me from the time I heard it. There's one fundamental choice point in life. Is the universe a benign universe where things are always growing towards the good? Or is it a malevolent universe where things are, there's entropy and things are moving towards going south, towards the bad? Once you make that choice point, everything flows from there. And, and really, you can see, it's a very brilliant point of how you live your life. Now, you made an interesting point, Shokun, about what you saw. And when I mentioned that to you, you talked about the outflow from that. Could, could yeah, you know? I think, uh, uh, glad that you brought that up because I see the fundamental misalignment happens when most of us who are purposely trained on competition subconsciously start operating from a space of lack of abundance. We believe that there is only as much market, only as much opportunity, and we will, we will, we will kind of miss on something. That's the kind of fear that takes over. Now, I don't know, and I want to come back to you with this question, but I see that in the corporate world, specifically in the context of business organizations, all of us seem to be operating from here and now as if there is no tomorrow. And if there is tomorrow, it's not an abundant tomorrow. There is only as much. Whereas when we look around the nature, nature is full of abundance. You know, there is no reason why I have to do something today under fear. I've seen a lot of people operate under fear, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of losing out. And there is this, this FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, which actually is like, a, like a, another pandemic in the, in the future of work, which I see. What's your view? Why do we uh, become so disassociated with the fundamental way nature is operating, Michael? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, we're drilling down. This is, uh, we're going back to our, some of the discussions we've had over the last several months. Drilling down is because you've impressed upon me the whole corporate world, corporate development. Um, and the fact that most of the training programs are just not very profitable, meaning there's a very low return. And I think we've drilling down to this one key point, which we're talking about right now, is how you can make this choice. First of all, is the universe a benign universe, a malevolent universe? And that translates essentially into a mindset that is the universe abundant, where it's going to produce more fullness, more fulfillment, or is it this malevolent universe, which is always we have to protect ourselves from, we have to out strategize the, the universe. Um, and the, the, the thing is, there's uh, another great human potential specialist, Byron Katie, who uh, wrote a book called uh, Loving What Is. And, and she said a, a great quote, another one, this is comparable to the Einstein quote in terms of an impact on me. She said, and she said a very interesting quote. She said, Reality has a way of winning, but only 100% of the time. Mm. Meaning, Very we res Michael, this is extremely interesting. While majority of the people who are listening to us would believe this in their personal lives, but when, it, when, when the professional in them takes over, it, 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 it somehow seems to me that this thing doesn't make sense. Explain the relevance of this to us in the context of corporate environment that we are all stuck. Yeah, now that's what I was starting to drill down on as just this point of, so you can see we resist and fight what is actually happening. We try to out strategize, out maneuver it. We get in our head. We're out of the, the place of fullness and abundance and we get into scarcity and lack, protecting ourselves, defending ourselves. You know, those coworkers aren't good. How can we, you know, my boss doesn't recognize me or as a CEO, you, you, you say, um, the, the situation is not working instead of accepting what is and harnessing this principle of abundance. Now we're gonna go back to the mindfulness piece. And mindfulness, I, I'm sorry, I'm diverging a little bit, but mindfulness really, as I said, is a buzzword. It's just really being present with who you are and what's happening. That's why I brought in the Byron Katie quote. 
being present with who you are and what's happening. And that choice point, one of the most important choice points we can make once we accept that the universe maybe is benign and the, our, our company is moving in a positive direction, we can make that discrimination inside of ourselves. Am I coming from abundance and fullness or am I coming from scarcity and lack? Now, scarcity and lack will be a place of contraction, a place of stress, a place of separation from yourself. It doesn't feel good. That's that simple. Coming from abundance, which is and fullness, which is there's joy there, there's enthusiasm there, there's positive, constructive, creative um, solutions, solution building and strategizing. And that is the one key place that I think anyone, if you want to be mindful, be mindful of that choice point, because simple, if you're, if you're creative, um, coming up with great, great solutions and alternatives, working well with your team, listening to them, are you going to create more success or are you going to create more success when you're coming from contraction, scarcity, and lack? Simple question. Absolutely. And this, this makes so much sense. And as a, as a, as a greedy corporate citizen, I would, my next question to you, Michael, would be, how do we do that? Can you give us some quick tips, certain actionables that can help us imbibe that mindfulness, that presence, that integration, both at the level of gut, body as well as the mind that you earlier started uh, with okay so now i don't want to get too touchy feeling here but i do want to just basically bring in some elements from body centered therapy and and as i said we are uh, always a mixture we're always a mixture of our thinking mind our head our heart and our gut so we already know how to use our thinking mind pretty well. We've got our, went through business school, you got your MBAs, you're good at strategic thinking. Let's just leave that one. We're already pretty well developed in that, so I'm not gonna even go there. But the fundamental value of using your mind is the simple quality of awareness. We can be aware of our internal states, just like we can be aware of our external states, what we see in the world around us. We can become aware of our internal states. You don't need to be meditating for 40 years like I've been to do this. Really simple. You can be aware of how you're feeling. Are you feeling um, open, relaxed, and full? Or are you feeling contracted and uptight? Simple thing. And all you do start doing, this is, I mean, this is basic. We should have learned this in kindergarten, which is notice your body. You turn just like you can, you can close your eyes or bring your awareness simply to yourself. Is the action you're taking producing more expansion, openness, fullness, enthusiasm, positivity, constructive thinking, or is it making you contract, get uptight, and stressed? I often reference my solar plexus or my gut for that. And you just can feel, we can try this for a minute right now. Just bring your awareness to your gut, solar plexus, heart area, and just notice do you feel some tightness, some constriction, some um, rigidity, or does it feel like it's got some flow there? So just, just notice for a moment the quality you're feeling in your gut, solar plexus, or heart. I'll add a few uh, tips here. One of the barometers very clear barometers is, are you breathing there? Mm -hmm. If your breath is held, which most of us do, especially when we're under stress, you can be pretty sure that you are constricting. So if you notice that your breath is tight or restricted or just very limited, take a breath into your heart, solar plexus, or gut. And use a nice expanding breath and be sure to let it go. Do one more breath. So now we can open our eyes and just see, just bringing your attention, your awareness, which is the simple practice of being aware of what's going on in your body and your feelings. And then adding just the element of noticing your breath to bring in some breath, because you can bring, you can consciously choose to breathe more fully and, uh, you know, just more openly in your body. Those two simple things begin setting you in a direction of 
um, more ease, more naturalness in your body. And when you start there, you're going to be referencing your body and you're going to start. That's the, that's like the, the preset. It's like the preliminary to beginning to notice, am I moving in the direction of constriction, tightness, stress, or am I moving in the direction of openness, enthusiasm, and creativity? Michael, this has been extremely interesting and, uh, you know, a, a real uh, thought experiment for me also personally, because clearly when we talk about focus, it's all about the mind. And it's probably the first time that you taught us how to be more aware of our bodies and therefore get into the, 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 the mind, mind state that we are in. Uh, clearly, I think everybody who's, who's hearing us now would get a lot of benefit from this. And what I loved about, <clears throat> sorry, what I loved about what you just said is it's so easy. It's about just being aware. When I can look at my phone, I can look at my uh, WhatsApp. Why can't be I take a moment and be constantly aware of my body? This has been extremely helpful, uh, Michael. And as you rightly said, there is so much that we need to talk about that we will, we will uh, have to come back uh, again and again. Uh, I really admire the work that you are doing. Uh, It'll, it'll be great for us to probably do one talk just on the uh, body presence coaching that you've been doing. And I've personally benefited uh, for, for on, on, on record for the, from that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Any, any thoughts you have for our... Uh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to br kind of bring it back full circle because we diverged a little bit. You know, I don't, you know, I didn't want to necessarily make this a body presence coaching session. That was just one tip. But the key thing that I think, you know... <sighs> In corporate development right now, empathy and mindfulness are really good buzzwords. People want to use those. They think if, they're, if they listen better to their, to their colleagues and their employees, uh, the, they're going to create a better work environment to create more productivity. So, but what's the real value? In the, in the personal setting, of course, listening to people better, listening to yourself better is going to be a value. But in the corporate setting, we really want to find the principles and practices that are going to make us more effective leaders. And so when you say empathy, the ability to listen or mindfulness, being more aware, the value of doing that is creating an environment where, once again, going back to Einstein's choice point and your interpretation of it, I'm just summarizing everything we've done here today, is to start being coming aware of that critical place in the concept and in your body of where you're choosing expansion, creativity, fullness, abundance, and where you are contracting away from it. And it takes a while to develop it. It's like a, a muscle. When you develop that, that, that choice point and its translation in your body, you're going to start moving your life in a more constructive, more fulfilling direction, both in your personal life and in your work life. So I really want to encourage people to see this is not, we're not talking aga bugga, we're talking just a simple, clear choice to make in your life. And I hope people can start bringing that into their, into, uh, as a, just a simple daily practice, just like we did today. Absolutely, Michael. This is very, very simple and very, very clear. Thank you so much once again for giving us your time. My pleasure, Shakun. I think the series you're putting together on the future of work is fantastic. And I hope this is a, a we put a little bit of direction into the future of our own presence in the world of work. Thank you so much.